this is my brand new, fully custom 3D printed RC hovercraft. I 3D designed, printed and then built it completely from scratch. But before we dive into the details of how I made it and take it for a spin, let me show you how it all started. A while back I built my first RC hovercraft using a 3D design I found online. It worked well, but I wanted to create an even better one of my own. So I decided to start all over again and design a new hovercraft from the ground up, just the way I wanted and with everything I had learned from the previous one. That brings us to phase 1 of the build, CAD design. I had never 3D designed anything nearly this complicated before, so this was a great learning opportunity for me. I did have a couple of main design goals, for example thrust vectoring for better steering, larger 4 inch propellers for more power and efficiency, a better overall skirt system and no need for any support materials while printing. This actually took a lot of time, way more than I had anticipated but slowly but surely the hovercraft was actually taking shape. And just a couple of weeks later it was finished. Let's print it out! With everything printed out, let me give you a quick parts overview for the entire build. Alright, so here we have two motors along with two propellers and two electronic speed controllers to power the motors, a servo for steering, transmitter and receiver for control, a battery to power the whole thing and some miscellaneous stuff like screws and bearings. Of course you're also gonna need the 3D printed parts. And I'm gonna leave links to where you can buy all of these components down in the video description below, just in case you wanna build your own after watching this video. With that, let's get right into the build! I'm just starting out by mounting the front motor as well as the propeller that will be responsible for actually making the craft hover. Now let's put the servo in and here I've integrated a really cool mechanism where the servo directly moves the thrust motor for thrust vectoring and then it's also supported by one bearing on the bottom and one on the top which we'll put in later. This servo horn is way too long as you can see so I just had to cut off the part I didn't need and also drill out the inner holes to be able to mount it to the underside of the rear duct. Time to see if it fits now. There was too much material underneath the bearing which the screws were hitting against. Quick fix with the knife for me and I've already fixed this for you in the design so the free files for the hovercraft do not have that issue. Now we can try slotting it into here and it fits perfectly and can actually rotate smoothly. Amazing! Let's continue by mounting the motor onto the rear duct. Now we can wire up the electronics. Here I'm soldering the main power plug to the electronic speed controllers. And then we can extend the motor wires and finally solder those onto the speed controllers as well. And everything else is plug and play like on any other RC airplane or RC car. I just finished wiring up all the electronics and doing a little bit of cable management. I'm actually really happy with how this turned out because on the last hovercraft that I made one of the big issues was just finding a right place for the electronics and then also oh securing God. them down. Oh, hell no, man. And here that is just a lot easier because there are these little slots that I integrated into the, the design where you can just slide a zip tie through like so and then secure it down 
and then it's all securely attached to the base. Before we test out the electronics to make sure everything works right, let me tell you about today's sponsor, JLC 3DP. Their 3D printing service lets you choose from tons of different materials and printing techniques, such as SLM with stainless steel or even titanium for maximum strength, SLA with resin for those super detailed smooth parts, standard FDM with PLA just like my hovercraft, and much more. Just upload your 3D files and get an instant quote, then have the parts shipped out to you. If you're working on your own projects, whether it's DIY builds, electronics, prototypes or anything in between, their site is worth checking out. Alright, I think now's actually a good time to test out if I wired everything up correctly or if everything's just gonna go up in flames. That would not be good. Let's try this out. Fingers crossed that it's gonna work. Please work. Alright. Okay, nothing yet. I should have everything here set up so that it should be able to work, but... Uh, yeah, it's not doing anything. Why is it not doing anything? Yeah, what? it wasn't working, like, at all. But I'll just save you from the headache of troubleshooting and skip to the part where it worked. Okay, so unfortunately there have been some issues with the receiver that I put into this thing here which is that uh, I accidentally plugged all the wires in the exact wrong way. Bruh. So uh, nothing ended up working. But I fixed that now and I've also moved the servo from the channel one to channel six. And now everything should work as intended. Let's see if that's actually the case. Let's plug in the battery. All right. So there is a connection. Let's try the steering. Perfect. Let's try the thrust motor. And then both at the same time. All right, so that all works. And then I've actually programmed this hover motor right here to be turned off and on with this button on the transmitter here. So if I hit this button, the motor should start spinning. It does, amazing, look at it. And then when I hit it again, it should stop. Oh yeah, that works perfectly. All right, now the last step before the skirt is mounting the lower hull as well as the upper roll hoop, which also wedges the steering mechanism and thrust duct in place with another bearing. That just made everything a million times more solid. That's looking pretty good. All right, so now it's actually time for the skirt of the hovercraft. So we need to cut this plastic bag into the right shape so that we can then mount it both to the bottom here and then wrap it around and mount it to the top ring here as well. First, I decided to make a cardboard template to make it easier. Then I actually cut out the plastic bag into the desired shape. And here's our skirt. Amazing, check it out. Let's mount it onto the hovercraft. And here is another great improvement compared to the old hovercraft, which is that the skirt is now screw mounted. Because on the old hovercraft, it was mounted on with hot glue, which is just like super messy, super finicky, difficult to install, and once the skirt wears down, you have to cut off the whole thing and start all over again. But with this new screw mounted one, it's way better. Okay, so the skirt is now fully attached, as you can see right here. Let's try this out! Yeah, it's not really that great, honestly. While the hovercraft does work, it doesn't really hover very well. This is because the skirt I made is a bit on the small side, meaning it doesn't extend out far enough below the lower hull, so any bumps in the surface make it skid instead of hovering. So, I made a new one to fix it. This one was better, but still a bit on the small side, so it wasn't perfect either. But third time's the charm, am I right? 
For both the second skirt and this one, I fused together two layers of a plastic bag around the edge to give it a much smoother appearance and make it easier to mount than the first one. I also installed a slightly smaller propeller with more blades up front in hopes that it would reduce the torque reaction on the hovercraft. Wow, this thing's huge! All right. With that, it was time to see if it finally hovers and drives better now. There we go, it totally works. Alright, now that was absolutely epic. Watching this thing just absolutely rip with way too much power, drift through the turns and shred the leaves is just absolutely amazing. Though it is still a little bit hard to control and takes a lot of practice. Due to the front single propeller, it tends to want to spin out to one side by itself without any steering input, so you always have to counter steer a bit. And also, if you go into corners a little too fast, because this thing is way overpowered, then it tends to flip over, because, you know, the laws of physics do still apply to hovercraft. But apart from that, it is just absolutely amazing. If you want to build one anyways, I'll add a parts list along with a download link to the 3D files in the description below. I'll definitely look into some different methods to improve the hovercraft design further in the future, so go ahead, press that subscribe button and smash the bell so you don't miss it. Also, I'd really appreciate it if some of you give me some suggestions for further improvements in the comments. With that, thank you so much for watching and happy printing! <laughs>